Hello everybody and welcome back to lesson 21, Developing Measuring Instrument. In the previous lesson, we have discussed about measuring instrument adoption, adoption and developing measuring instrument. By the way, if we get a suitable measuring instrument for our research question, so adoption is best option. If we cannot get a suitable exactly the same measurement for our concept, so we have to adapt or we have to modify it a little. If we cannot get any instrument to measure our research question, so we have to develop measuring instrument. So developing measuring instrument is the last option because it is very, very challenging and it is very complex task. Now let us see the steps to develop measuring instrument. So the first step is a definition of concept and the next step is uh, dimensions identification and the third step is items generation and the fourth step is content validity assessment and the fifth one is determined measurement scale and the last one is data collection and scale purification. Let us discuss one by one. The first step is the definition of a concept or it is a variable that we are going to measure or we want to measure in our research. So first we have to clearly understand the definition or we have to provide a clear meaning of that particular concept according to the required context because in different contexts a single concept may have different meanings. So to do that, we have to assess similar concepts from the existing literature. For example, if we take job satisfaction, we have to define, we have to understand the meanings or the definitions of job satisfaction according to our context. The second step is identification of uh, dimensions. Based on the concepts, we have to identify the dimensions that represent us. We have to identify a construct that make up that particular concept or that represents that particular concept. So here, to get the dimensions that represent the concept, so we may refer the previous studies related uh, concepts. We have to uh, refer the existing literatures to better understand about the dimensions of that concept or we have to conduct exploratory research design or exploratory research type and we have to just get about the insight or we have to get the dimensions that clearly represent or that adequately represent the concept. Let's take an example of uh, job satisfaction. For, for example, job satisfaction uh, may have uh, three dimensions that is pay, working condition, relationship with colleagues. So these three dimensions adequately represent the job satisfaction. By the way, I just take this as an example. I'm just using just an, as an example. So don't take it uh, uh, seriously. Job satisfaction may have more dimensions. Anyway, now I'm considering uh, that job satisfaction has uh, three dimensions. So three dimensions represents uh, job satisfaction. And the third step is once we generate, once we uh, have a uh, dimension, so the next step is we have to generate items to represent those identified dimensions. For each dimensions, for each dimensions, we have to find out items or questions that adequately represent those uh, dimensions. So in this case, we can just uh, interview the subject matter uh, or we, we can discuss with the subject matter experts to get uh, items for each dimensions or uh, we can refer some literatures or some questioners to get items for that particular dimensions. In this case, we have to create a pool of potential items or questions that represent the various facets of the dimensions of or the constructs. Let's continue with the previous example that is job satisfaction uh, having three dimensions. So for each dimension, we have to prepare or we have to uh, collect items to represent or uh, to represent each dimensions. For example, for pay satisfied with my salary, my salary is 
enough for my basic needs my salary is equitable to the job i am doing my salary is competitive so these items these items represent the pay the dimension that is called pay and the working condition is represented by the following items that is working environment is safe sufficient material to use physical environment allows me to do my job office facilities environments are clean so these are the items that represent the working condition and the relationship with call uh, is represented by uh, the items easy to work with my colleagues people care about each other i enjoy uh, my co-workers, my subordinates are honest and obedient. So these items represent this, the dimension called relationship with colleagues. So again, pay, working condition, relationship with colleagues are the dimensions which represent the job satisfaction, the concept of job satisfaction. After having a pool of items for each dimension, so the next step is uh, to assess the content validity. So to assess the content validity or to ensure the content validity of our research instrument, so we have to provide that items, that items for the subject matter experts uh, to get a review or to get uh, a feedback whether those items represent us adequately represent us that dimensions or not so based on the uh, feedbacks that we obtained from the uh, subject matter expert we have to adjust or we have to eliminate some items that doesn't have any relation or that doesn't represent the dimensions or we have to add some or more items that better represent the dimensions And uh, after uh, assuring the content validity, uh, we can determine number of items in measuring a concept. The concept should be measured using a scale with multiple items. To measure the reliability, by the way, to measure the reliability, we have to use a multi-item scale consists of number of closely related individual statements, items, or indicators, we can say. With summation measure, a single concept, or we can say a dimensions. The general guideline or the general principles of the items or the uh, questions should be the statement need to be closely related they represent only single construct we can say or dimensions they must completely represent the construct to be measured with a multi-item scale and the last one is minimum of three items is necessary to achieve acceptable reliability a single dimension or we can say a single construct should have at least three items to be represented so as to have achievable or so as to have acceptable reliability but as we know commonly we see that there are five to seven or more of items for a single construct to measure step is determine the measurement scale a scale might be odd or even number categories according to according to the uh, opinion or the judgment of the researcher in the case of uh, odd number the midpoint typically represents a neutral position but in the case of even number there is no neutral position that means in the case of even number there may be yes or no so there is no neutral position agree disagree non-neutral position anyway if there is a judgment that the researcher uh, that the researcher that some portion of the sample is likely to feel neutral about the uh, uh, issue being examined so odd number category is used that is uh, three scale five scale seven scale and so on for example uh, when we use uh, five scales that is strongly disagree somewhat disagree somewhat agree strongly agree so here there is a neutral position that is neither agree nor disagree if the researcher believes that there is unlikely there will be many neutral respondents then an even number category is used like strongly disagree somewhat disagree so here as you see there is no neutral position and somewhat agree and somewhat uh, strongly agree so it is up to the researcher judgment to determine either 
even or or number categories most of the time most of the time uh, researchers use the odd number category that is the 3 5 7 9 and 11 uh, categories or scale measurement scales anyway here what we have to know is that the larger the number of scale categories for example uh, when we use three when uh, instead of three when we use five instead of seven uh, five when we use seven so the larger the number of the scale categories is the greater the precision for example instead of uh, asking either agree or disagree it's better it's better uh, to ask with a uh, five Likert scale that is uh, from strongly disagree up to strongly agree so the largest the number of scales that means the five Likert scale the five point Likert scale is better precision than the three point Likert scale so the largest the number of scale that is the nine uh, Likert scale is uh, has better precision than the sevens and the sevens uh, has better precision than the uh, five Likert scale but here the challenge is but here the problem is the more categories we have the more difficult to discriminate between the labels for the respondents the respondents they may face a problem of identifying or differentiating the labels for example if uh, we use 11 uh, scales or nine scales so the respondents may face a problem to differentiate the seven scale in the eighth scale so some respondents face greater difficulty in processing the formation with more categories so before determining before determining the number of uh, categories or scales we have to know our respondents we have to know our respondents we have to uh, estimate our uh, respondents if our respondents are well educated and well experienced respondents so they can process information associated with larger categories if they are not so we have to use we have to use less uh, categories that is less number of categories the sixth step which is the last step is data collection and scale purification in this case we have to collect data from the target population that uh, our uh, study uh, will be conducted so the respondents are uh, collected or uh, taken from the uh, target population and the coefficient alpha now was computed separately for each dimensions for example in our case in our previous example there are three dimensions for each of the three dimensions the coefficient alpha alpha will be calculated so if we get less less value of coefficient alpha so to improve that alpha value we have to delete certain items from each dimensions so, so to delete those items from each dimensions so we use the following criteria that is items with low item to total correlation will be deleted first so what does item to total correlation item to total correlation is it is a correlation between the score on the single item it is a correlation between the score on the sing, on the single item and the sum of the scores of all other items making up that dimensions making up that dimensions so this is what we call item to total correlation so it is a criteria it's a criteria to delete the items items with low item to total correlation will be deleted first so that increases the coefficient alpha value and at the same time that decreases the number of items as a result we can get less number of items with improved alpha value so we may just we may just repeat these steps several times to decrease the number of items and to increase the coefficient alpha value the other task that we have to do is the factor analysis before that by the way intercorrelation among the dimensions should be low which indicates the uniqueness of the dimension that means if the correlation among the dimension is high so it shows that our dimensions are not unique 
which means they are the same. They are the same. So the factor analysis uh, provides us the factor loading, which, which may suggest the reassignment of some items into other dimensions, and each item should have high loading on a single factor. This assures or this uh, ensures our construct validity. Our uh, construct validity, that is the convergent and the discriminant validity. Based on that, by the way, based on if the items has uh, low factor loading, so we have to delete that items. It, if the items has low factor loading for all the dimensions, so we have to delete it. If it has low factor loading for a particular dimension, so we have to uh, reassign that particular items to uh, a dimension having high factor loading. And then we have to compute the coefficient alpha. And if we get low coefficient alpha, that is low reliability, so we have to repeat the previous step, that is the item to total correlation, a uh, few times to decrease the number of items and to increase the coefficient uh, alpha, that is the reliability. Then ultimately the high alpha value indicate a good internal consistency among the items within each dimension. And in addition, the combined reliability for all the items, or we can say all the dimensions should be high. So as uh, to say our instrument is reliable. So after finishing these steps, so we can uh, say that our instrument is valid and at the same time reliable. And we can use that instrument to measure our concepts in our research. This is all about today's topic. And if you have any question or suggestion, you can write it on the comment box. Thank you for listening. Have a good time. Bye.